So we're reading uh, Descartes' discourse on method. Um, and that is how it's commonly referred to. It's a title on the cover of our volume. Uh, but it would do us uh, some good, I think, to look at the uh, title page within the book and see the full title of the book, which is called The Discourse on the Method for Conducting One's Reason Well and Seeking Truth in the Sciences. I think that if we read that full title, um, considering what we've been reading so far and the track we're on and the, the kind of questions we're asking, that that gives us a better idea of why it's appropriate to read this this book right now, how it may continue the discussion and, and hopefully move us on and uh, open up some new things. And really, uh, quite something what's promised there, the, con the, the method for conducting one's reason well. Uh, Descartes says in, the, in part one of the discourse that, that a reason he takes to be a universal faculty, that, that it exists in each human being whole and intact. Uh, that, that is, that he's assuming that each, each human being has the capacity to reason and that, moreover, uh, everybody's got it to the same, same extent. So um, other things need to be taken into consideration to account for the diversity in people's reasoning abilities, current reasoning abilities. Uh, and he says there are things like imagination and wit, and things like that. But um, I think that the important thing for him is that he believes that we all have this power of reason. And that reason, uh, supposedly, and this is the second part of the, the full title of the, of the work, uh, should help us to seek truth, should enable us to seek truth. Uh, so if we, we put those two things together, uh, that on the one hand, everyone's power of reason is both uh, competent and intact. And on the other hand, that reason is supposed to enable us to find truth. Uh, then, you know, the question is, so what do we have to do? What, what adjustments do we need to make in order to, to find truth with our reason? If there's nothing wrong with reason itself. Then what is the problem in a way? If we, if we don't have truth. You know, what are we doing wrong? And that kind of is something I think of reading Descartes. I seem to think that he's doing something wrong and and we're, in general, doing something wrong, and he's trying to straighten things out. So, um, you know, he is act, at least promising the, the, the kind of things that we've been looking for. How are we supposed to reason well? How are we supposed to think about issues in such a way that we do it properly? And what would the properly mean? It would mean that we came up with some kind of results, and the results, I imagine, are true. In the sciences, and, and you know, again, we are in a culture in which the sciences mean something more specific, perhaps, than to the ancients, certainly to Aristotle, what he meant by sciences, Sextus, and so on. And Descartes, too. Descartes is closer to us. He's a man of the 17th century, and... Uh, it is a time, it's, he's a contemporary of Galileo, and uh, you know, other important early sciences, uh, scientists, and, and, and physics, and the so-called natural sciences are beginning to really take shape in their modern form in Descartes' time, and as we'll see, he's in, very, very interested in, in natural science, that is, he's under, uh, very interested in the scientific understanding of, of nature. Uh, but we can see by his use of the word science, and I imagine that the translation is reliable here, that he still, for instance, considers philosophy and mathematics to be sciences. That is, that, that scientia, as I understand it in Latin, just means knowledge. So, as with Descartes, and I mean, excuse me, as with Aristotle and others of the ancient world, the sciences were just those fields of knowledge, different fields of knowledge. And uh, uh, one would imagine that for Descartes, there should be a kind of a method for seeking truth in all of the sciences that would work in all of the sciences. That is one method. And I think, uh, having looked look this over again, that that method is essentially a mathematical method, or it's the method that has been demonstrated in mathematics 
uh, to be a successful way of uh, arriving at definite truth. So uh, let's take uh, start off, to, you know, looking at part one, and and what we find reading it is that this is a remarkable document. Uh, it's uh, really very very uh, interesting and and different. Uh, in the sense that it is not only a work of philosophy, it's a work of, bio or of autobiography. It's a kind of an intellectual memoir that Descartes is uh, not only telling you in this book, I, I imagine, you know, at a certain point, what his method is and, and what, his, what his suggestions are for conducting your reason well and finding truth, but he's telling you how he arrived at it in his own life and, and what prompted him in a very personal way. To search for such a thing, and, and if we look at part one, um, really much of it is a, an assessment and critique of his own education, which is a very, very interesting thing. Yeah. You know, as he tells us, he was educated. He went to college. You know, he went to college. Like well, we went, you're going to college. I went to college, and he talks about the different things that he studied, and and it's. You know, when he says on page three in the beginning of the second paragraph, I've been nourished on letters since my childhood. Uh, letters, what does that mean? You know, not, a, not, not learning the alphabet, of course, but, but literature, and especially uh, classical literature. And what that meant in European education at the time was the study of Latin and Greek and the reading of the classics of the Latin and Greek languages. And, uh, you know, he's not, not exactly, uh, he doesn't have huge regrets that he spent a lot of time learning Latin and Greek and reading the histories. That's a big part of, you know, classical education at the time, reading people like Plutarch and, uh, and uh, Tacitus, the great, you know, the great Roman historians. Perhaps he had read uh, Herodotus and Thucydides in Greek, a little less likely, but possible. You know, reading histories and, and reading poetry and of course, also reading philosophy and goes through these different subjects that he has learned. And he's very humble in the sense that he, he's very quick to say, I was not the, I've envied other people's wit or quickness or memory. Uh, and I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I was not a bad student. Uh, and going through the worth of these different things and philosophy, mathematics, theology, and sort of saying, you know, I, I don't know anything. <laughs> I, I'm filled with doubts. That is, I, I've had this thorough education, and he was about as thoroughly educated as you could be in those days, and perhaps more educated than people are today. I would say that's probably true, most likely true. But w what we get from part one is a man looking back on his education and saying, I, I worked hard, I, I did a lot, uh, things seemed likely uh, to be true, the things that I was taught, but when, when it comes down to it, I, I don't know if I know anything from uh, whether I've gotten anything of real substance out of this education. And this is not a completely um, unusual thought that people have about their education. You know, what, what was I really served well? Um, uh, I guess it depends on what you want to get out of education. What that is, what criterion are you judging your education on? I think Descartes' criterion is truth. Did I learn anything true? Well, maybe, but you know, heck, if I know, it could be true. It could be false. I have no way of doing uh, that kind of assessment. Um, I think that the most, in this very interesting part one, I think that the, the most revealing thing that he says about himself is towards the end, uh, on page six, at the end of the first paragraph. Uh, and he says, and I have always had an especially great desire to learn to distinguish the true from the false. And if there's one thing that he's looking for, it's that criterion by which to distinguish the true from the false.